welcome to chaos theory. So today we look at some dynamical systems. Dynamical system theory is the theory of time. And uh, I wrote you down here a list of dynamical system. We start with uh, my favorite system is the standard map of uh, Chirikov. It appeared in physics first, but it's uh, enigma. We don't understand the system yet. I just show you some animation which uh, shows the phase space in a for a fixed parameter c. We believe that for the parameter c bigger than 2 the map is chaotic, meaning that it has sensitive dependence on initial condition on a set of positive measure. So I myself tried to uh, solve this problem for more than a decade and uh, failed tried essentially everything I could get uh, hold on. And it's a very, very, very intriguing, very, very interesting problem. And uh, we don't know what is going to happen there. <clears throat> so that's the standard map. The second problem, which I uh, like very much, is the n-body problem. It's very classical because uh, it appears in, uh, in Celestial Mechanics. There's even a whole uh, a book here about that. Uh, Celestial Encounters is a very nice book which uh, uh, illustrates the story of uh, understanding the n-body problem. Now, for more than a hundred years, one has tried to kind of get the grip also to, to see what happens, how big are the singularities. One has found that the singularity, collision singularities, when two suns collide, that has zero, zero uh, measures. Of course, this is all mathematical. These are all mathematical problems where the, the suns actually points. So, but we know that it's possible that particles can go to infinity in finite time. These are called non-collision singularities, but it's not known whether they have a zero measure. And I don't know, I mean, Barry Simon has it as the first problem in his famous 15 problems in mathematical physics. I'm not aware that it actually has been really formalized in a formal way before that. Simon uh, measures Bonlevé, who has kind of, what was one of the first who has started to study such things. I myself tried for about a year to, uh, to prove this using uh, Vlasov dynamics. We will come here. The idea would be that you just approximate the n-body problem as a, you think about this as a density distribution and you try to find the evolution equation of the density distribution. Somehow PDE methods like here, this is a partial differential equation in fluid dynamics. And also here you have a, a fluid, fluid, fluid dynamics. So you treat the particles uh, uh, not as points, but uh, with, with a continuum distribution. And you look at it probabilistically, that you just look at the probability distribution of uh, all the possible initial points, and you see whether you can uh, prove this. But this is completely open. <clears throat> also, one of my favorite systems is the billiard uh, system, which is uh, 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 seemingly simple. So you have a table. It can even be polygon polygon table. I don't know. I got that once in a in a in a in a conference. This is uh, Diana Davies has made this. This is a, a polygon uh, that's a billiard in a in a pentagon, and uh, it's a very very uh, intriguing problem because we don't know essentially anything when the when the table is uh, smooth, but we see some coexistence of stable and unstable uh, behavior of <laughs> the LP. Uh, billiards, and there we see uh, there's an example where we see coexistence of stable and unstable behavior. I show you some phase spaces uh, here. It's extremely a uh, beautiful problem because it's very easy to understand, and uh, it's so so hard to to get the grip on it. Also, we don't know whether uh, the set of periodic points has zero measure. That's another question which is which is unsolved. Now, uh, uh, my, my probably really uh, favorite problem is the double pendulum because it's, uh, it's so beautiful and it's so enigmatic. So this is a, a, a real system. So you, here you see a JavaScript implementation, uh, which I once wrote. So these are also pendula here. So, so when, you, when, you, when you look at the a pendulum, which, is, which has more than one degree of freedom, you in general have a, a chaotic motion. In this case, of course, there's friction so that the pendulum eventually will, will go down. Also, these are examples of penduli which produce uh, chaotic motion 
and uh, in this case there is also friction which makes them eventually uh, lose energy and be in the minimal energy in the minimum energy configuration also here but uh, we believe that this is for some energy for some energy con configuration at least that this is showing positive uh, entropy so this is also interesting topologically because you have a you have, you have four variables you have the position the two position and the two velocities and then you have energy conservation so you're on a three manifold and so you have differential equations which move on that on that on that on that three manifold and it's possible in three dimensions that you have chaos we have seen the Lorentz attractor last time in the chaos lecture and so when you have three uh, dimensional the differential equations in three dimensions already can exhibit chaos and that's what one sees here one measures this but uh, we are unable to, to, to prove this. <clears throat> also, one of my favorite problems, actually I wanted once even almost to get uh, uh, into that and, and write a thesis, but then I heard uh, others have tried and failed. So it's, 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 it's very frustrating if you start to uh, you know, uh, 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 work on a problem which is maybe just too hard. So the problem was uh, for a long time open here, whether you have at least, you have, you have one table, Moser has asked this, uh, a famous problem uh, related, I mean, he was motivated by the stability of the solar system. Is the solar system stable? One doesn't know. One has theories about it. KM theory, for example, which gives stability for large set of initial conditions, but we don't know whether it's stable here, whether you can go to infinity by always reflecting at the boundary. So this is called outer billiard. And uh, uh, Richard Schwartz has just, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, maybe a decade ago, actually given the first example of a billiard where you go where, where it can be unstable but uh, but but these are polygons and so the the tangents are discontinuous if you have kind of the tangent is also continuously changing we don't know if it is sufficiently smooth three or four times differentiable then uh, we know it's stable by by km km uh, uh, theory so that's kind of one playground for uh, for uh, hard implicit function theorems. <clears throat> also very nice, uh, and we worked also on this uh, 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 for a, you know, at least a year uh, on, on, on uh, cellular automata, especially we looked at cellular automata in an almost periodic setup. But what it is, it's a very beautiful uh, system which has been introduced by Hedlund uh, in the 60s, but then uh, uh, Wolfram has written a whole book about it and popularized it. And uh, so a question, open question is, is there some, are there some, uh, if, if, a, if, a, if such a cellular automaton is sur sur surjective, so every configuration can be reached with a map, then, uh, uh, th th then, then one sees a, a dense set of periodic points. And this is, this is still open. So these are intriguing, uh, uh, it look, look simple, these this, this systems look simple. Game of life is a problem where you actually are with d equal to two, where you are in the plane. That's a famous problem, a famous system of Conway, uh, the game of, li uh, game of life. And, uh, but in general, uh, so game of life is not a surjective uh, case. So uh, very, very uh, beautiful systems also for experiments. Now, uh, Vlasov, that's I mentioned Vlasov. I got interested in Vlasov because of n-body problems and I was, it's kind of a smoothed out version actually if, you, if your measure here is located on finitely many points, then you have the n-body problem. So this is really a generalization of the n-body problem. There is no uh, stochastic uh, assumption. It's a very beautiful Hamiltonian system, very nice. If you have smooth functions, they stay smooth. If, if V is, a, I have here just a kind of a, a, some, some names, uh, Hep. My quantum mechanics teacher, uh, Klaus Hep has uh, uh, actually, uh, one of the first mathematical results there that the existence if v if the potential is smooth, then you have uh, existence for for all times. Uh, I was interested in the case also when the system is coupled with some macroscopic thing. So that's an example here. You see, see here, kind of a, 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 an example. This is the gas has only two points, but there is a macroscopic boundary like a barrel in which the gas is moving, or a container in which the gas is moving. So if the gas is has some higher pressure on one side and on the other, and the container will also move. So this is a coupled system of a finite dimensional system with an infinite dimension. This is infinite dimensional. 
and, uh, and, and so what, what happens is the question is, does it really settle? We see kind of from physics, everybody knows that if you take a piston and you put it, settle down to, the, to, to, to an equilibrium. Even so the gas is very, very, uh, has a very, very complicated, uh, does a very complicated motion. Another problem I was a big fan of when, uh, when I was a, a student is the, is the rigid body motion. So this is angular momentum, this is B, which depends on the angular momentum, but depends also on the distribution of the mass. So you have a, you have a top, like this in this case, we have a top space, we have also a force acting on it. And various people have actually looked at integrable systems cases. For example, if it's rotationally symmetric around the axis, then it's integrable, there are other cases. Sonia Kovalevskaya, I think I've animated her here, uh, has, uh, has also uh, covered a case which is integrable. Integrability is a very, very interesting thing. So if V is zero here, then this is, this is integrable and uh, this is just a, a Lux system. And, uh, but uh, Euler was really, Arnold also has written about this in infinite dimensions. This becomes actually fluid dynamics. So the Euler equations in fluid dynamics you can see as an infinite dimensional, uh, infinite dimensional rigid body motion. So it's a very, very nice system which, which has this kind of integrability question. Integrability is something which is very intriguing also in billiards. We don't know, that has been asked first here uh, with Birkhoff and Poritsky, who was a po postdoc here, whether uh, the only uh, uh, integrable uh, smooth convex billiard is an ellipse. Now uh, this system, the, the logistic system is uh, very beautiful and my PhD advisor Oscar Lanford has first proven the Feigenbaum conjectures which uh, this universality, so there is universality here. <coughs> when you are changing the parameters there is this bifurcation cascade which when, when you get to the Feigenbaum attractor and the Feigenbaum attractor, one of the questions one doesn't know is the you know, the dimension of this Feigenbaum uh, attractor. Maybe I show a, a picture of this bifurcation diagram, which is very, very famous. The last thing is just an example of a, a dynamical system which appears in number theory. So uh, anything which you do in, in the continuum, we can also look in the discrete version. You can start with the Chirikov map, for example, and look at it in the discrete case. There are questions here. When you take here, you just actually work on uh, uh, finitely many points and you let this map act you can look that's also what Oscar Lanford was looking at where well, you can look what have, how, how, the, how the periodic points are so everything is of course periodic if you have only finitely many points but here this is an intriguing system which is kind of considered considered too hard for mathematics so best mathematicians have tried it's called the Collat system I learned it as an Ulam system Ulam has propagated it but, uh, but the question is, so you, have a, you, know, you start with a number like five, and then you, uh, when it is odd, you multiply by three plus one. So that's 16. And when it's even, you divide by two. And I have an animation here. I actually animated it using the Ulam spiral because Ulam uh, uh, is really associated also to this, to this problem. There is a nice uh, survey article of, uh, uh, of Lagarias uh, about 11 years ago which uh, summarizes it, but it's, it's, it, it's considered too hard for current mathematics. Uh...